Hey, good afternoon. This is Mike Pappas. Uh, welcome to this breakout session, EWP and Lean Construction Opportunities for Collaboration. Here's a number of our panelists who you will hear from in a few minutes. Um, with the way we set this up is we're going to introduce ourselves as we begin speaking. So I'm Mike Pappas. I'm the CII Associate Director for Deployment and glad to be here today and I'm moderating this discussion. In 2015, advanced work packaging was declared a project delivery best practice by the Construction Industry Institute. Its use has pre predominantly been in the process and oil and gas sectors. Here's a graphic that briefly shows AWP as a production system. Other methodologies are practiced in other sectors of construction, such as lean construction in the general building, technology, manufacturing, and healthcare sectors. Due to time, our focus in today's session will be on AWP and lean construction. Within the CII, AWP Community for Business Advancement, we are also looking at other methodologies, including PPM. All of these methodologies are intended to significantly improve project delivery outcomes compared to more conventional project management approaches by integrating lean concepts such as robust work execution planning and control processes with collaborative decision making. The early formation of the AWP practice included concepts of lean principles to increase reliability and predictability for delivering projects that were increasingly plagued with significant budget, schedule, quality, and safety issues. Defining work packages and how they are integrated and executed is aligned with lean thinking. Integrated materials management and the use of enabling technologies are aligned with lean thinking. Stakeholder collaboration across the entire life cycle for planning and executing the work is aligned with lean thinking. So why have this conversation now? Well, as we mature in our practice, we recognize there are areas that, can we, that we can still improve further. Uh, there have been a few papers and public speaking engagements recently by different experts who claim AWP doesn't work. During the 2020 CURT conference, discussions with practitioners uncovered some misperceptions about AWP's methodologies and raised issues that can be improved with AWP, and also uncovered some, some inconsistencies in how AWP is implemented. Recently, some organizations have promoted an anti-AWP message. We realize they're selling consulting services and software, but we as an organization must rise above. There is more than one effective way to deliver a project. People who say they have the only right answer are kidding themselves. Uh, we ought to work together to improve project delivery, and there are good things in all of these methods that can help us do that. It's time that we embrace hybrid solutions of AWP and Lean to optimize how we approach the range of project types and conditions that exist. This discussion is intended to start that conversation and explore how we embrace new ideas that will lead to better project delivery outcomes. Now to our panel. Our first guest speaker is going to be Jamie Gerbrecht from ExxonMobil. Yes, so Jamie Gerbrecht, uh, also with the Community for Business Advancement, the CBA as vice chair within CII for AWP. And I'll mention several key aspects of the AWP methodology that draw individuals and companies to implementing AWP principles in particular on projects. One is how comprehensive and well-structured AWP already is for bringing benefits across much of a project's timeline in both planning and execution. Another is around understanding and experiencing the clear case for action that brought AWP about in the first place and how it was jointly developed by both COA and CII by diverse research teams consisting of owners, EPCs, service providers, and academics. Okay. Yeah, then another key aspect of AWP is how well it's defined, described, and available to us in publications such as CII's implementation resources 272 and 319, and now in the latest research team reports on AWP integrated practices for supply chain, completions, commissioning, and startup, and on overcoming AWP barriers. 
to borrow a description from Dr. O'Brien, AWP is like a thorough wellness program for projects that industry is witnessing bring about improvement in tangible ways to performance, including in safety. And this is before organizations have reportedly reached even a consistent mid-level of maturity, much less a high level of maturity with applying AWP. Now, when we look at the timelines around development and evolution of Lean and AWP and become familiar with various project delivery approaches, we see that AWP had the benefit of including or providing for further incorporation of a number of key elements of other methodologies. However, as we've discussed within the AWP CBA, along with our efforts to mature and improve in fully applying AWP well, with its existing scalability, flexibility, and benefits, we see that we can continue to look into key elements and focus areas of various other project delivery approaches that can potentially further enhance the performance and value of an AWP project. Thanks, Mike. Okay, next up we have Samer Emdenat with Kafari Associates. Samer, you might need to unmute yourself. There we go. I'm okay now? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Uh, so I'm Sam Ramdanat, co-founder of vPlanner. Uh, we're a lean management consultancy and a software provider for tools that support the last planner system of production control. Uh, we specialize in supply chain management and in particular uh, when applied to integrated project delivery uh, projects. Uh, we apply lean thinking uh, and production planning to integrate technology, processes, people uh, together to streamline design and construction value streams. Um, we look at the development of lean design and construction. Uh, it started around the time frame of 1999, I believe, with the formation of the Lean Construction Institute by Glenn Ballard and Greg Howell, uh, where they studied several projects in, in fragmented supply chains and realized that uh, the, there is uh, high uncertainty and, and low reliability in work execution. So they developed this framework um, of the last planner system uh, to uh, improve the reliability of the um, um, execution in the near term. Over the years, uh, the system evolved uh, in its thinking uh, to encompass the entire project. And now with the introduction of what's called last planner 2.0, there is focus on uh, the, the milestone schedule uh, through the phase planning uh, with the incorporation of tax planning and flow management uh, on projects during phase planning all the way to the daily execution. Um, the last planner system has been associated quite a bit in the most recent past with the uh, integrated project delivery method and, and that's rightfully so because it, in, under the integrated project delivery, um, it, it creates a, a, an even better opportunity to manage the project as a supply chain and uh, with the engagement of all the stakeholders, uh, teams are able to build better, more reliable uh, work plans. Um, so the, at the essence of, of applying production management and lean thinking to projects is the development of this shared understanding of the work sequence. Um, and which is which is really essential for managing the complexity of the handoffs and and creating a better flow on complex and fast moving projects. Um, uh, it, the approach results in smaller batch size, uh, in pulling from targets, and and sometimes deferring decision making um, uh, too soon, so that or or or, or uh, making decision making at the right point, so that we we can uh, reduce rework on projects. Um, I'm thrilled to be part of the panel and I look forward to the discussions. I've been following uh, AWP for quite some time. I see more commonalities than differences and I hope we, we discuss those uh, in a few minutes. Mike? Yes, thanks. Sorry, I was looking for my <laughs> mute button. Thank you, Samer, appreciate it very much. Uh, next up, we have Fernando Espana from Constructex. Hi, this is uh, Fernando Espana. Uh, thank you uh, so much. I appreciate uh, 
um, that uh, I'm able to join this panel. Let's see. So first, uh, I really do want to thank uh, my friend Samer for sharing his insight. Uh, I've been working with Samer for a long time. Uh, he's well respected and we can learn a lot from the work he, you know, actually we have done in the healthcare, general building, mining and technology sectors. Uh, and I know that uh, uh, what what uh, Samer said about uh, Greg Howell and Glenn Ballard. Um, I did start with those two back in the late 90s uh, when we we're putting uh, together the LC LCI. And uh, so go back a long way, learned a lot. And just like advanced work packaging, you know, it had to go through its its trial and tribulations in, uh, in how it was applied. And and uh, there's a, a lot of great uh, practice that, that has come out of it. Uh, but I too, like everybody said, there's, there's a lot of complementary components. I, and I, for one, uh, recognize that ADP as a production system uh, with lean thinking underlying the methodology. Uh, we may not all recognize it as such, but uh, it's certainly there. Uh, and we certainly can't claim we've reached nirvana either, uh, but there's that just an uh, indicator of how much uh, opportunity there really is. And um, if we go back to the very early lean terms, you know, it's defined by giving the customer what they want when they want it with nothing in stores and no waste, uh, then we're, we're well on our way to achieving this goal. Uh, we look at examples like interactive planning, constraint management practices alone are, are means to increase cooperation across organizations and between people. Ensuring readiness of CWPs and IWPs prior to release is, is extremely lean concepts. Um, efforts to drive alignment uh, to an optimal path of construction, uh, recognizing there exists an optimal path of engineering, a path of procurement, a path of fabrication, path of commissioning and startup, you know, uh, speaks loudly to this uh, uh, ability to drive integrated project delivery. Um, and uh, we need to just create that as a goal. Um, breaking the ground into integrate, integrated production packages at the IDP level uh, really enables uh, effective production control. And uh, I think that's the more we rec recognize that, uh, the, the better our projects are going to be, the more synchronized, the more integrated they'll be, uh, the more collaborative efforts uh, are going to uh, come out of that. Um, concepts and effective practice around integrated materials management, virtual construction models, and digital threads entering more and more into our conversations really speaks heavily about our seriousness at looking at material flows, information flows, and production flows. These are also very lean concepts and, and uh, practice in, in the lean construction community. Um, I think uh, there, uh, we, I'll, I'll be a little bit uh, 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 more forthwith on this. I think uh, we're much more sophisticated in, in many ways around that. And uh, we're kind of leading the pack uh, from an A to P perspective. Um, but there are several easy places where we as a group, especially in the in the uh, EPC world or the ADP world, can start applying lean construction applications. Uh, for instance, at the FEL stage, uh, there are some really nice uh, decision making um, uh, methodologies, uh, terms like choosing by advantages. Uh, something that even CII has adopted, uh, PDRI, the um, Project Definition Rating Index, and there's risk analysis uh, to really evaluate project alternatives and achieve more optimal solutions around engineering, fabrication, logistic, and construction. A long way to go there. Um, I think that's a huge opportunity. Uh, we can start creating, uh, and some do, I'm not saying that we don't, um, create integrated cluster groups uh, during detailed design and engineering to ensure optimal solutions and trade-offs uh, between disciplines are attained, right? There's there's things that others do better and we should be uh, able to, to exchange work efforts um, to optimize a solution or come up with better solutions, how we help each other at a job. Uh, some of the other easy things and what Samer was alluding to, the last planner techniques, um, I do work with this tool and, uh, you know, using last planner techniques to prioritize and manage engineering deliverables. It's uh, it's a, it's a great uh, um, effort, uh, produces great results. Uh, there are uh, methods and technologies, and I could share some with you on how we actually do that. Uh, using last planner techniques to prioritize and manage construction efforts uh, during the four to six week look ahead process right before we execute work, uh, bringing in those types of techniques to, uh, to really draw that final bit of integration and coordination collaboration between the trade disciplines uh, will offer a lot of benefits. Uh, another one, which some of us practice as well, is uh, co-locating co production teams and creating dedicated big rooms and collaboration centers where they, where people can come together and actually do active planning and you know look at work processes and and optimization efforts and sharing technology. Uh, uh, 3D models and, and things like that, strictly for the purposes of, of planning and executing work. 
Uh, more long term, uh, I think that uh, uh, that uh, Sam alluded to this as well. You know, uh, start encouraging more early involvement of stakeholders through integrated agreements. I know that CII is looking at this at the IIPD um, integrated uh, uh, industrial integrated project delivery uh, systems. Uh, you know, what do contract incentives look like? Uh, how do we really drive performance so people are are incentivized to to apply these practices? And then, of course, I think there's some lean practice guides uh, integrated with AWP that that probably should be a natural outcome of these efforts as well. And I know we're just talking about lean, but there are other um, other processes out there uh, that are practiced in different industries. So that's uh, that's really what I wanted to share. I'll turn it back over to Mike. OK, thank you very much, Fernando. Appreciate that. Next, we have Chris Taylor with Technip FMC. Chris. All right, so I'm Chris Taylor. Um, I'm a construction manager for Technip FMC. Uh, I've kind of had the, I'm a member of the CBA um, for CII's AWP. Um, I've been working on projects for about 15 years now, kind of boots on the ground. I've had the uh, opportunity to work with both production control consultants, and I'm currently working with our uh, AW, AWP process within Technip FMC. Um, I've seen firsthand how the different lean practices and AWP can complement each other. But if egos are not controlled or if or if commercial reasons get in the way, um, how they can also cause a lot of frustration and be counterproductive. Um, so I, that, that's kind of my perspective. I'm not quite as, uh, or I'm far more short-winded than my predecessors. So that's about my perspective on it. So thank you, Mike. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. And last but not least, we have Bill O'Brien from the University of Texas at Austin. Bill? Sorry, Bill, you're muted. There we go. There you go. Hey, thanks, Mike. And I appreciate the chance to be here and for this conversation. And I hope it's sort of a longer conversation, everybody. Um, it's interesting, right before this meeting, I got an email not from the Lean Construction Institute, but from the Lean Institute, which is the broad lean people saying that lean is not a uh, strategy, but it is strategic. It's about building capabilities. And I think that's actually a good distinction to make. I've been around the lean and other related world for in construction from when it got started. I was a grad student at Stanford when Lowry Kuskila wrote sort of the founding documents for lean construction. And then the academic group IGLC came out of that. Um, <clears throat> I've watched the lean community start really with a very purist view of the world which really came out of the book, The Machine That Changed the World, which is a great book about how the auto industry adopted lean um, or how basically the Japanese were beating everybody else up because they weren't lean. And that made everybody turn to the Toyota production system. And then there was a large set of language and theory around production for Toyota. And frankly, a lot of people at that time were trying to force fit everything into the Toyota model of production. It was several years later when there was a more mature viewpoint coming around, well, you know, we can't get rid of all the variability and, you know, projects are short term or we're not making cars here. And so you started to see an evolution of lean concepts to include batch thinking and variability and kind of you went from a very purist philosophy to more of a uh, let's try to make production and construction better. And so then you've seen that develop into various stages, most mature really in the commercial sector, but applied elsewhere. Um, AWP got its start really in the field and often by applying essentially lean constraint management in the field, but 
quickly adding the concept of a workface planner, which was someone to help the planning that in lean would be done by the foreman or general foreman to an additional aid to that person so that we weren't dragging foreman out of the field too much, but still giving them work. And so there seems to be quite a bit of confusion around that amongst the communities. And I think some of that's commercially driven, some of it's academics wanting to be purists, and some of it is not invented here. And so that's unfortunately has gotten in the way of people actually doing much the same thing, uh, just finding different ways to implement. And really where AWP grew from that though is saying that we understand that a lot of what's possible in the field is very constrained on fast track projects by what happens upstream of it in terms of timeliness of design and procurement. And so what you saw with AWP was really a marrying an extension of well-established front end planning practices with practices that are good for the field in workface planning. And I think that's probably caused a lot of confusion for people who are not part of that and don't necessarily honor the front end planning practices that are in place in the industrial construction. And so for some people, that's just, it's, it's a philosophical burden for them. For other people, there may be other reasons for that, but I think it's caused more confusion than not. When I think about where we are, whether it's, a purist view of lean, a more batch view of lean, which is often attached to the book Factory Physics, which I teach out of, um, or other philosophies. We're all trying to do the same thing. It's just a way of how we're getting there. AWP, I think, is pretty advanced on marrying front end processes and creating the conditions for success in the field. There are many opportunities to extend what those success conditions can be in the field, whether it's from the lean suite of techniques or other types of things that people are doing, uh, other supply chain aspects in there, uh, where AWP, I think, is goes further than others is how to think about setting up for success up front. And we look at that from a work process point of view, but there are things we can learn too, as I think it was Fernando had talked about IPD, there are people who are looking at that setting an upfront success primarily first from a contractual perspective. And there's probably some things we can share from each other there. So I'm hoping that this conversation we're starting today can be used to help really bring these communities together and stop arguing over semantics or perspective and saying, where can we share? And with that, let me turn that back over to Mike. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bill. All right, what we'd like to do now is get into some question and answer. Um, I have some questions to start with, but for the audience, uh, if you look in your GoToMeeting control panel, you see a gray bar named uh, labeled questions. And so if you will uh, feel free to enter your questions there and I'll moderate that and we'll take those um, to the panelists. First question I have is for Samir. Uh, AWP practice tends to follow a maturity curve often measured in years. The more you proactively engage, the more benefits you receive. From your experience, do lean construction practitioners follow similar maturity curves? If so, what do they look like? Um, sure, yeah, I, I, I believe so. Um, uh, so lean in, in, in general is an attitude towards uh, um, improvement um, and it's, it's in its most basic uh, 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 forms. But there is also structure to it and, and to develop systems that, um, um, that emphasize um, uh, lean thinking, it, it takes years for organizations to grow. So, you, you know, you can think of lean at the level of a project, you can link, think of lean at the level of an individual or a group of individuals within a project, and you can also think of lean at the level of the enterprise. And uh, uh, it's a journey, uh, it requires commitments, it requires alignment, it requires shared uh, thinking, and it uh, it requires building that culture, that attitude within the organizations uh, to uh, take to make the most out of their uh, investments. 
Um, Lean is also involves aligning the processes, understanding the workflow, the sequence, uh, aligning the people and uh, the technologies they use. And that requires also uh, different levels of uh, maturity. Even within the, the framework of a single project, uh, we think about the complexity of project work. We form an organization of, uh, uh, to, to manage a project that's comprised of so many um, suppliers uh, to create a network to supply the project. So that creates a temporary supply chain. So to manage that and manage it well also requires uh, maturity. All right, thank you very much. Um, Jamie, from what has been shared in industry events and publications, we're sensing that various project delivery methodologies can potentially be more complementary overall than conflicting. Do you see opportunities for industry to continue enhancing practices? Yes, thanks, Mike. You know, from the AWP Community for Business Advancements perspective, we do see various methodologies as potentially having complementary components. So this would suggest a, a real opportunity for the AWP community, having progressed AWP to its current state, to further explore key focus elements of the other methodologies that can perhaps strengthen performance of a project applying AWP. You know, possible elements that, that have come to mind for consideration or further collaboration and integration. Uh, you know, Bill mentioned the, the lean suite of techniques. Uh, Fernando uh, detailed a number of those in terms of a further description of some of them. Uh, IPD, I2PD elements, you know, there, there are a number of, of approaches that we have the opportunity to explore. Um, you know, potentially some supply chain inventory related optimization aspects. And, and just overall reduction of waste opportunities. So yes, uh, we do see the complementary uh, components opportunity. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Jamie. Fernando, since you've practiced in both worlds of AWP and lean construction, what are the challenges you see in adopting these methodologies and others? Yeah, uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, yeah, they're always a challenge when we introduce uh, new concepts. and. I'll just share even my first experience when uh, I started out in lean and I went up to uh, up to the uh, uh, the oil sands and uh, and uh, met with Lloyd Rankin and one of the one of the first things he says just don't mention lean <laughs> it's not it's not accepted and so somebody had a bad experience and so you know the whole last planner concept of, of the foreman and the general foreman is as was mentioned before versus the work the dedicated work based planner and having dedicated people sometimes just doesn't fit, sit well with people. And I think we have to kind of look at what is best for the project and what's best for the, the system. So getting over that, uh, I think, uh, and finding a uh, this balance, especially around an AWP framework, which, which I'm, I totally believe in, um, needs to happen. That's, that is a little bit of a challenge. And there's, there's already a challenge bringing AWP into organizations that practice more conventional approaches anyway. So bringing lean may be viewed as another flavor of the month instead of a value generating process that that I think uh, can be integrated easily into any AWP program. And it has been around for decades, so it's not, it's not something new. Uh, there are, uh, what, what Bill had mentioned, this, there's some confusional, uh, confusion on the foundational ties to Toyota and manufacturing, you know, but some believing it just doesn't have application to construction. Um, and as always, you know, uh, getting leadership uh, to sponsor all this at the highest level is key. It needs to be part of a change management process. Uh, Otherwise, you get a very sluggish start or more often an, a no-go. Uh, we got to make sure that we don't get an attachment to a dogma. Uh, I think that's a, a little bit of a, a problem in, in, on the lean side. And, and also, uh, especially what I discovered at the Kurt conference here earlier this year, is that people just have these beliefs that, that what they do is the only way. And they've heard these rumors about what we do, and they're, they're totally off. And uh, it's it's um, it's been interesting talking to some uh, lean leadership and and having them be surprised is what what we're really doing. So um, you know we practice ABP and we don't need another methodology or worse yet other organizations claiming ABP doesn't work. You know just adopt our stuff. That that's got to go. Um, lean and another challenge lean and ABP uh, maturity levels need to recognize that there needs to be more distributed governance. You know and control structures. 
um, you know, we have a lot of type A people and uh, everybody wants to control things, but there's so many, so much people can offer that uh, they need to, uh, they need to uh, get engaged. Um, and I've always been a big proponent of the power of engineering to significantly influence outcomes. And this requires more high value engagement uh, that may be resisted within the engineering community. And uh, middle managers uh, need to buy in um, during field execution. Uh, it's easier with foreman and general foreman because they're desired to coordinate efficiently. So let's get them involved. They love this. And uh, final challenge, and this has happened to lean day one, but oh, who's going to pay for this stuff, right? It, seems, it just sounds like a lot more, a lot more work. Well, you got to get over that. There's too many benefits, and and uh, we can prove that day in and day out. So those are just some of the uh, some of the challenges. That's a, that was a tough one. Well, thanks, Fernando. You did a great job with it. Yeah. Um, Bill, how do we change industry perceptions, and what should academia do? to support a more inclusive approach to project delivery in engineering, procurement, construction, and commissioning and startup? Well, that's a tough one, Mike. <laughs> um, I think, uh, you know, as of getting industry perceptions, I think probably both industry and academia need to get together on some common terms. Um, I think, you know, one of the I've been around this industry for a long time and really it's a bunch of sub industries. You've got the commercial sector and its own set of norms. You've got the industrial sector and its set of norms. You've got infrastructure and horizontal business and its set of norms and all have grown up for good reasons. But they also often have their own language for doing things, even though they're saying very similar things like if you talked about feed or front-end planning and whatever the commercial world you'd probably get a lot of strange looks but that doesn't mean they don't do planning and so we need to really set up some Rosetta Stones because I think we often get lost in our terminology and institutional norms and that's frankly true in the academic world as well people have come from certain areas and they have their certain things they you know have attached to and so they have difficulty getting past it and so I think there's a lot of work on being, frankly, more interdisciplinary within our effective sectors. And, you know, I, I'm hopeful that, you know, the conversation we're having here is a good, good step towards that so that we can all, you know, we're all doing projects, we're all doing similar things. There are some differences, but they're more alike than not. And so to move past, move past those differences. So I think certainly in academia, some of the conversations I'm having with thoughtful people are around those type of things um but we just we got to make it happen and i think it's not just academia but we really could probably use a kick in the pants from industry is helping us move that forward as well okay thanks for that uh chris it was mentioned that awp builds on lean principles and there are a lot of similarities between awp and lean construction in what regards do you think lean differs or takes a different approach than awp Thanks, Mike. Um, yeah, as you said, there are so many similarities between AWP and Lean that that really complement each other. But from my construction perspective, I'm, I'm uh, working for an EPC contractor. I think one of the biggest ones is is who is doing a lot of the legwork. Where AWP utilizes a workface planner, which is somebody who should have field knowledge and experience and puts a plan together along with the frontline supervisor. Um, and a lot of the other lean systems, the frontline supervisor is responsible for putting that plan together. Um, so that kind of takes him out of the field a little bit more than what some construction people um, prefer. I guess secondly, uh, AWP uses most of what companies already do. They take mostly the same tools and data and batches it and organizes the project from the beginning which adds an extra layer of control to help get the correct information and materials to the field at the right time. Um, in other systems that I've used, it's almost been a secondary or tertiary uh, tool that's not necessarily inherent to what contractors are already doing, and it's not currently in their practices. Um, another example would be the timing of when the IWP is built. 
it might be considered waste or add variability to the process according to more uh, other lean principles. Um, other systems tend to look deeper into work processes and more minute timeframes than AWP. AWP gives some guidelines, but doesn't necessarily get down to the level of details that lean does. Um, and there are other items like continuous improvement that that other other lean principles have built into their um, approach. But I think they definitely complement each other, as we've mentioned before, very well. But there's some there are some minor differences. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, just a reminder, uh, we've got a couple questions in, but uh, please go to your questions bar in the go to webinar control panel and submit your questions for these panelists. Um, uh, Mike, are, uh, Sam are here. Yeah. Hey, Sam. Um, I want to add to uh, what Chris has just uh, said uh, in relation to uh, the roles and uh, the, the planning uh, roles within the AWP world and, and how there are similarities and and how we apply uh, production planning with the last planner system. So I agree um, that there is more emphasis on the foreman um, in the last planner approach, but as I believe as last planner matured, especially with the addition of production planning uh, and tech planning uh, in the phase planning part of the last planner system, uh, it uh, required new roles to be defined in the industry. Um, so there's five stages to the last planner approach. Um, um, at the highest level is where we map out the um, uh, production um, execution strategy for the project uh, at the master schedule level and the phase schedule level. And there was this missing role in the industry and that's of the production planners. These are people, roles on the project that would be responsible for um, bridging the gap between the master schedulers and the foreman uh, in the make ready and the near term planning horizon part of the last planner system. And I believe as in the more recent years when uh, with, with larger projects, when we have a very distinct role of production planners, which might be akin to or uh, to, to work face planners where they're, they're responsible for this interface of bridging the gap between what happens at the level of the workers and what happens at the level of the master uh, schedule and the execution strategy. We, we end up having more reliable, more, more uh, robust production systems. Thanks for that. Appreciate that. Um, here's another question. If somebody wanted to further implement lean construction into their AWP workflows, how would they best get started? Yeah, I could uh, I could take a stab at that one. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of things that we do well, and interactive project planning uh, and the early path of construction, for instance, uh, tends to bring a lot of folks together. But when we start looking at deliverables, how do we organize that? Uh, there are methodologies uh, we can apply. Last planner, we can apply these accordion models of groups coming together, going up, going out, and getting some work done, and 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 uh, coming back in and and uh, checking in these these daily huddles. Uh, that's an that's a, an easy one. As is uh, what what Sam was alluding to this the, the last planner and and applying this uh, production planning production planner uh, role. Uh, the last planner, you know, is those foremen, and they do coordinate, and they can come together quite easily because they they naturally do, and actually put some kind of structure into into that last bit of uh, of execution. Uh, and it is a little different from just looking at a, a look ahead. Uh, there is a there is a very proactive way of getting engaged. So I think uh, I think those are some of the some of the easy things to do, but you do need to actually look at uh, a program. So. Uh, you know, just saying that is easy, but you, you really do need to sit down and, and kind of look at what all that means and how you would introduce it and, and uh, how, would you, how would you get buy-in from the right people. Okay, thanks. Would anybody else like to add to that? All right. Um, as this is an AWP conference, why should we consider other methodologies? I'll take a stab at that too. And I think, uh, you know, Bill said it earlier, uh, you know, the, 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 
the variations of project types and sizes and portfolios versus giga projects, mega projects, you know, um, going in with an A to P view that one size fits all is just, it's, it's crazy these days. Uh, and there are, there is a blend of, of approaches. Uh, yes, we can put an ADP framework together, uh, but uh, there are some great lean concepts. How do we make better decisions, right? Some some other uh, very lean thinking methods uh, that we can apply uh, to come up with alternatives to to drive uh, better synchronization or or prioritization of engineering deliverables and and really increasing that. So so uh, it's ADP has has is, is a great system, but there's a lot of a lot of gaps. And uh, we need to look at outside of what we've done. Uh, I was brought into the shipbuilding industry. They wanted to find, they wanted to learn about construction, you know, and uh, got involved with, uh, with the uh, uh, airplane uh, 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 renovation and, and, and uh, rebuilds and things like that. They wanted to look at what construction was doing. So why we should be doing the same thing. Let's look at what other industries are doing, even outside of construction that, that says, well, this works. And uh, we're getting, getting great, great improvements. So we should be open. We should be exploring. That's what continuous improvement's all about. If, if I could add to that, Mike, um, I think I would say the same thing Fernando did, but restate a little bit. I think AWP is, as Jamie has quoted me saying, it's kind of an overall wellness program. AWP was always designed as a framework for effective execution that has elements of constraint management at its core, particularly in work-based planning, but also if you think about the idea of work package, work package management, path of construction, putting in place a, an effective chance for success on a project. So a mature AWP implementation has a lot of good things about it and is really a project that is in control. That doesn't mean that there's not opportunities for improvement. And once you have put in place the AWP foundation, as Chris said, you know, it builds on what we're already doing largely. And so it's easier to get going with it and it's easier to sell it. Then that creates the opportunities for further improvement. And why not look for further improvement? And there, some of the things that have happened in the lean community, some of the things in the supply chain world certainly can be applied and you know implement it on projects to go further yeah and thank you bill i, I would also give another perspective because i also do uh, lean implementations and i'm sure samer can can also confirm this you go into a lean world and and you're meeting with people that are supposed to be lean experts and uh, clearly advanced work packaging methodologies uh, would apply or even just doing you know what they say they would do if they did it correctly they'd be getting a lot more benefits so, you know, being the smoke jumper into a project, and, and I know Samber's got a lot of firefighting gear on as well. Um, we see the same kind of problems on, in other industries uh, when we work with the lean construction community, the production control community, and, and there are so many underlying factors that uh, need to be addressed, um, even organizationally, uh, that, that our, our projects tend to be the ones that suffer. So whether you're looking at it from an ADP perspective and what, why should we be doing things and you look at it from a lean perspective on those projects and we, you could clearly see, well, this is what you're missing. You know, it, it's, uh, there's a clear win-win situation uh, uh, by learning, learning all these different methodologies and how we can tweak and apply them uh, where they could drive most benefit. Yeah, hey, Fernando, Fernando yeah. from my experience, I'm, I'm a pragmatist when I get involved in, in project uh, work. So I, I look at different technologies, different methodologies, different frameworks, and then I adapt them to the context uh, of the project. So in, in some cases, we get involved in these mega hospital construction projects with a very fast track schedule. And uh, you would look at how the team would intend to deliver those, and it's in big batches of design deliverables followed by sequential um, uh, phase construction work. And you start wondering, well, why is it? Why would that be the right framework to approach the the project? A better framework would be to to think of this from the back to the to the beginning of the project and and sequence the information flow so that we're delivering what we need to start the uh, the right elements of construction into smaller packages um, obviously 
could borrow from advanced work package planning to to have the you know the mindset about decision making and supply chain management this uh, to to get information from early design to to construction on a package by package basis and then apply lean thinking and production management techniques so that when we're in construction we create a production system that emphasizes flow through the locations by applying tact planning um, i i don't see a lot of uh, uh, Issue, conceptual challenges by adapting different framework to the context of, of the, uh, the project. Okay, thanks. Hey, Anyone Mike, else? Yeah. Mike, Mike, if I can maybe reflect back on, on, I think, what was the previous question, which I think was around how a company would go about moving toward uh, incorporating more of a blend of let's say, lean concepts further into AWP on a particular project or within their systems going forward. And I see that as really part of what we would like to, as a community, be able to answer better uh, as we go forward. Um, we, we've identified this opportunity and we would like to really, I think, further energize what we do next on this topic. Uh, through this conversation, that this is part of furthering the, the conversation and whether it's through the AWP Community for Business Advancement or in other ways uh, through uh, synergies uh, with, with CI, CII members and, and others, that we look to have enough interest in this topic uh, to move it forward and get to where we can all answer that question better uh, for, uh, for our companies and for the industry. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jamie. Uh, another question here, with, with all these different but somehow similar concepts, what is your recommendation to decide which approach to start with or to focus on when taking the first steps as an organization? Well, I'll, I'll start out. Go ahead, Jamie, did you wanna, or is that? This is Bill. Okay, Bill. Go ahead. Sure, I'll I'll say this. I think you know it depends where you are. I mean, if you already have a lean implementation going on, probably look at that. But I would be informed by the broader framework of AWP. I think if you're starting from zero, I would go with AWP, not just because we're an AWP shop, but because AW was designed as sort of that overall framework for success. And so it has elements of it of where to get started. What we find is most people start with AWP in the field with workplace planning, could have come out of a lean implementation, figure out a resource that correctly, see some successes, and then work their way upstream. That would be a typical path. But there's nothing saying you have to start there. I mean, it, there's a lot of value in getting the front end of a project set up. And if AWP helps you do that, start there, you know, wherever wherever it makes sense. But I think it's good to begin with the end in mind. And as an overall framework, I think AWP offers more than some of the other sets, which kind of focus on certain pieces. I'll stop there for a minute. Yeah, yeah I, would, um, I would add to that uh, in, from an ADP perspective, you know, if you're, if you're looking to start out in something, uh, I, I'm a firm, believer because I've lived in both worlds that AWP is a great framework. Um, it's it's got structure to it. Now the the fact is our projects are, are subject to huge amounts of variability. We're looking for predictability, we're looking for reliability. And so there's all that variance uh, variability that's out there leads to this this requirement to, to bring in an unstructured element. And I think Lean has that ability to to kind of help us manage through that that craziness uh, of, of that variability environment uh, to make sure that people are staying on track and uh, delivering the deliverables. Uh, you know, even even though it's he we're heavily into constraint management, uh, I think that little bit of, of, of uh, I want to say, enhanced focus on getting our teams, making sure they're working on the right things and the right deliverables and, and even driving further alignment, uh, I believe is a, a huge uh, opportunity to bring in these lean, lean principles. Uh, to support an ADP program. You, I think you need that blend of a structured approach, uh, which I'm not saying lean isn't, but uh, there are there are uh, there's, there's a structured approach that work, works very well and an unstructured component, which I think lean addresses very well. Thanks, anyone else?
Okay. Uh, we've touched on this. We touched on this some already, but uh, maybe there's more to it. Th those of us who attended the ECC conference saw a presentation that said AWP or workface planning doesn't work. How do you respond to that? Um, I'll I'll take another stab at it. I wasn't at that conference, uh, but I have spoken to people that that um, that did attend that conference or spoke after that conference, and uh, there are some clear misperceptions uh, of what AWP is. Um, now, part of that confusion might be because of the, the different ways we practice AWP, uh, but the fact is, as an industry, we're moving, we're we're advancing. So uh, one clear concept was the fact that hey, you know, AWP does AWP pra uh, practice doesn't embrace this location-based planning process, and uh, you know, for the most part, we do. But there are elements where you know, still people still want to separate the, their IWPs uh, based on uh, some volume of hours. So uh, the industry's uh, pretty confused. I mean, at the Kurt conference, I even heard a lot about uh, we don't embrace just-in-time material delivery, right? Well, wait a minute, just-in-time uh, material delivery, you know, is, is a managed inventory system, which we do very well. Uh, but the fact is if you do this one piece flow, hey, that's the quickest way you're gonna go out of business. So, uh, you know, there's some some purists out there that, that look at these types of concepts uh, without actually delving deep into what it really is. And I started discovering that, even had some really great conversation with lean leaders, and it was like the eyes went open, what? You do that, those are the results you're getting? Oh my gosh, we didn't know that. We thought that was just all fluff. Uh, so yeah, anyway, that's my two cents. Thanks, Any, someone else? Okay, what are some of the pitfalls we should be aware of in implementing uh, AWP or lean construction for that matter? I'll, I'll try. I think uh, one can easily get uh, distracted by um, the, the procedure, the process, and miss the end goal. Uh, I think uh, whether you're, you're implementing um, um, 3D modeling on a project or, or AWP as a framework or uh, the last planner system, you need to, to really be clear on what, what you're trying to achieve. And then once you're clear on that, you need to find um, um, a rigorous way of testing it and evaluating it along the way and reacting to it. Uh, without that, I think these, these discussions can be uh, you know, abstract and, uh, and, and they, they don't really lead uh, anywhere. So know what you want and find a way to measure it and then check what you're doing against where you're at and, and then evaluate whether uh, you know, uh, what, what's happening is aligning with where you're trying to, to go and, and make decisions. And that applies to anything. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, not recognizing it as a change management and putting a plan together on how, on how you're really going to approach it to get the right level of buy-in and how you're going to grow it across your industry or your organization, you know, is a is another pitfall if you don't take care of that. Uh, I think another one in lean uh, that I've seen, you know, that probably applies to AWP as well is there's non aligned uh, non alignment of just the leadership alone. And so working on that to, to, to get the benefits, uh, you know, and uh, I think is another uh, pitfall that we all believe everybody's, you know, giving us a nod that, oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. But in practice, they're doing double work. So uh, not having that, uh, not aligning that leadership and, and not having a, a plan to implement it, I think are uh, um, pitfalls. Um, I think also along with not right-sizing the implementation Right, not trying to eat the whole elephant at once. Uh, so, what does that, uh, what does that start looking like for your organization? That's it. Okay. I was waiting to see if anyone else would jump in there. Um, <clears throat> what kind of improvements should we see with Lean or with AWP? 
uh, well, uh, with AWP, I think we've 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 seen uh, real results um, in terms of of production improvements. You know, total installed costs. I mean, those are pretty well documented. I think when we start looking at at lean, um, I, I believe we're going to see pretty uh, uh, pretty nice improvements in just our our productivity. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the better integration uh, between our our different uh, um, trade disciplines and our engineering teams. And so I think we're going to start, we would see some nice compression in our schedules and uh, deliver and, and have the ability to deliver things when they're needed. And we being able to even uh, tighten up our supply chain uh, in delivering uh, materials, you know, in, in smaller batches when, uh, because we can, we can get better and more predictable delivery. Uh, using yeah, state. predictable is is the key. There um, is uh, well, it's it's very easy to measure uh, and uh, easy to react to. Um, so how predictable are we? How reliable are we um, at doing the things that we uh, intend to do? Um, and then when we fail, uh, we we want to be able to understand why uh, we failed and adjust the course uh, to getting to the target. Um, Continuous improvement and and uh, understanding variances um, are very important. Um, so uh, I would say uh, one of the the outcomes of of implementing a rigorous uh, lean framework on a project is to uh, maximizing the reliability of the execution. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, it's uh, 27 after the hour, which means that uh, we're just about out of time for this session. We wanna thank you all very much for joining us and thank the panel for sharing their expertise and their opinions. And we've got a couple of minutes uh, before joining the next session, which is integrating commissioning and startup into the AWP work process. And you can get to that back on the feed loop page and scroll down to uh, scroll down on the left side in the sessions until you find that. So we'll see you. No, I'm sorry, that starts at two o'clock. We have a half hour break in between. So please spend some time, uh, visit the sponsors, spend some time networking, and we'll see you back in the main conference at two o'clock. Thanks very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you.